An alkyl halide is a hydrocarbon that has a halogen on the carbon chain as a substituent. The most common halogens that we find on organic molecules are chlorine and bromine, but we also sometimes have fluorine and iodine as substituents as well. When we are naming the halogen on a hydrocarbon, we pretty much keep the original name, um, but we convert the ending of the halogen's name from ene to o. So for example, instead of calling this fluorine, we call it fluoro. And instead of calling it chlorine, we call it chloro. Bromine is bromo, and iodine is iodo. And again, chlorine and bromine are the ones that we see the most frequently on our organic molecules. So here are four different types of alkyl halides. We're going to practice coming up with their names. To name these molecules, we're going to follow the IUPAC rules for naming that we have already learned uh, for naming alkanes. We are just going to treat these halogens like substituents on a regular carbon chain. So just like when we were naming alkanes, our first job is to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms for the first molecule. Here it is. This is the chain of four carbons. And then our second job is to number that chain of carbon atoms to give the substituent, in this case bromine, to give that substituent the smallest possible number. So we want to start numbering the carbon chain on the carbon atom that holds the bromine that will give the bromine the smallest possible number. Then to put the name together, we start by first naming sub the substituent. We only have one in this case, but if we had multiple substituents, remember we put them in alphabetical order. Um, in addition to naming our substituents, we also locate them. So we would call this one bromo because we have a bromine that is on carbon number one. So the location of the substituent and the name of the substituent. And then that will be followed by the name of the parent chain, the alkane in this case, which is butane. So this is one bromo butane. Sometimes students want to omit the one in this name, just call it bromobutane. You can't do that because the bromine is not forced to be on carbon number one. We could just as easily have the bromine on carbon number two, in which case it would be called 2-bromobutane. The location of a substituent on a straight chain alkane is never, ever implied. So let's take a look at the next example. Again, we want to start by finding the longest continuous chain of carbon. As a refresher, we look at all of the carbon endings in the molecule, and we want to find a way to connect one of these endings to another, passing through the most possible carbons. So our longest continuous chain of carbons is going to be right here, or uh, equivalent chain would be right here. Those are exactly the same. And... Um, we want to number this particular carbon chain to give our substituents the smallest possible numbers. We have two substituents in this case. So for this, we have a question of how to best number this carbon chain. Should we number it left to right? Or should we number it right to left? This one's actually kind of tricky because no matter how we choose to number the carbon chain, our substituents will always be on carbons 2 and 4. So this is a huge tie in this case. And in a situation like this, where you have to figure out which set of numbers you should use, you will break the tie by uh, alphabetizing the substituents. So for example, in this molecule, we have a chloro substituent and we have a methyl substituent. And since the chlorine starts with the C comes first in the alphabet, we're going to give that substituent the smallest set of numbers. So we're going to choose the numbers that I have in blue, again, because 2 versus 4 versus 4 versus 2 is the same either way. And in a situation like that, we put the smallest number with the substituent that comes first in the alphabet. So um, now we're ready to name our substituents. We have a chloro on carbon number two. 
we have a methyl on carbon number four. Remember, we have dashes that are separating our letters and our numbers. And then that's followed by the name of the parent chain, pentane. Next example, we have this molecule, a single cyclic carbon chain with one substituent on it. For these molecules, we get to choose, for cyclic molecules, we get to choose which carbon is carbon number one. So we'll designate the carbon with the substituent to be carbon number one. And then whether we number clockwise or counterclockwise for this molecule, it won't really make a difference because we only have the one substituent on carbon number one. When we have a cyclic molecule with only one substituent, this is the one and only time when you can leave the location off of the name of the molecule. So instead of calling this one fluorocyclohexane, we just call it fluorocyclohexane. It's not super wrong if you call it one fluorocyclohexane, but a lot of homework software will mark it wrong if you have that one on there. It's like um, if you call it one fluorocyclohexane, everybody knows what you're talking about, but it's just technically not the right way to do it. So here's our last example. Again, we have a six carbon chain, two substituents, an iodo group and a methyl group. And because this is cyclic, we get to choose which carbon is carbon number one. So it's either going to be the carbon with the methyl group or the carbon with the iodo, kind of like in this example up here. If we choose to make the iodo carbon number one, then we should number around the ring counterclockwise because our goal is to give the substituents the smallest possible number. So we would rather have our substituents on one, two instead of one, five. If we give the methyl group position number one, then we are going to number our ring counterclockwise clockwise, so that the iodo is on carbon number two. So no matter how we number these, our locations are going to be one, two, or one, two. Again, it's a similar tie. Remember in that case, we defer to the alphabet. We have methyl, which is an M, versus iodo, which is an I. This comes first alphabetically, which means we are going to give it position number one. So our methyl group is going to be on carbon number two. Now, before we get all excited and throw the name together, we also have, because we have a wedge present and another wedge present, we have some stereochemistry on these carbons, and stereochemistry is always part of a molecule's name. So we have to include stereochemistry as well. For me personally, I would prefer to put the, the name of the molecule together and then come back and add stereochemistry afterwards. So I'm going to start by just building the regular name, 1-iodo, 2-methyl, cyclopentane. And in this case, because we, you might be wondering, wait a minute, I thought we just said we could leave off the one. You can only leave the one off if you have only one substituent on the ring. When you have multiple substituents on the ring, the one has to be included. So before this name is done, we have to put the stereochemistry in the front of the name. The stereochemistry goes into parentheses in the front of the name, there's a dash that separates the parentheses from the rest of the molecule's name. And inside this parentheses, we will put each chiral carbon. So I've put a comma here because we're gonna put the stereochemistry of carbon number one and the stereochemistry of carbon number two. We also are going to need to locate the stereochemistry. So I'm gonna put those numbers in. This is going to be carbon number one and then the stereochemistry either R or S and then for carbon number two, it's stereochemistry R or S. I think it's helpful to draw the hydrogens in when we're about to assign stereochemistry. It just makes it a little easier to visualize. Let's start with carbon number one, which is this guy right here. We have to prioritize these substituents. Iodo gets uh, priority number one. Hydrogen gets priority number two. The ring, if we go around the ring, 
Um, the direction of the methyl group, that's going to be second priority. And direction towards carbon number five will be priority number three. So when we connect one to two to three, that is the shape of an S. Our hydrogen is pointing in the correct direction. So this is a 1S carbon. And now let's tackle carbon number two and its stereochemistry. We have a hydrogen in the back. You know, I'm going to erase some of these numbers because otherwise it's just an awful lot to look at. Okay, so we have a hydrogen in the back, which is going to be number four. This one's going to be a little trickier to assign. We've got a methyl group over here. We have a CH2 around the ring this way, and we have a C with some stuff on it this way. So we have a carbon versus a carbon versus a carbon. Because it's a three-way tie, we have to look at what is attached to each of those carbons. So up here, the methyl is a carbon with three hydrogens. Down here, this is a carbon with two hydrogens and another carbon. And over here, this is a carbon with an iodine, a hydrogen, and a carbon. Of all nine of those atoms, iodine is the highest priority. So this carbon is going to be the highest priority carbon, or highest priority substituent, so that'll be number one. This carbon over here was a hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and this one was a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So there's our prioritization. One to two to three is the shape of an R, and we are looking at it in the correct direction. So this is two R.